So my name is Daniel Harris and this is the London Cloth Company. Uh, we weave a variety of different fabrics for all kinds of different purposes. So I started building the mill in 2012 and I started with small looms and then slowly it got a little bit more out of hand and continued to get out of hand until I sort of ended up with about 40 tonnes of machinery dating from about 1870 to 1980s. So it's one of the few places where you can where we commercially use the entire history of mechanised weaving uh, from more or less the Industrial Revolution to present. There are about 200 mills left in England, which most people would be astonished about. Like, most people think it's all gone. And there are mills in England running 24 hours a day. In a, in a state-of-the-art mill, pretty much everything would be automated. There would be a machine for doing every single job. A person still has to run it, so here all the shafts are threaded by hand, all the reeds are slayed by hand, everything is uh, tied, and all the knots we do are done by hand. These, this model is an 1890s Dobcross loom. These are all 16 shafts, 90 inches wide, so these are weave two meters wide on 16 shafts, so you can weave incredibly complicated patterns. Um, you can weave three cloths on top of each other at the same time, drawing colours from each cloth into the faces. So it's very, very good. They're really versatile. Anything from heavy blankets through to super fine suiting, flat weave carpet. You think, oh, what do I need for weaving? Well, I need a loom. Wrong. You need a loom. You need a pern winder. You need a warping mill. You need a creel. Then you need a cone winder. Then you're making so much bloody fabric. You need a fabric rolling machine because you've got to roll it and post it off places and you've got to teach yourself weaving from nothing. And these machines, they're not like uh, set it up, press go. It could take two days to set up a loom. And it's gonna take two days whether you've ordered 30 meters or 500 meters. People come along and we have our range of fabrics that we do and they go, I want that one. Or they go, oh, I want that one, but we want to change a few things. Another way of working is people will come along with a vintage swatch and say, we want to recreate this. And we'll, we'll get it as close as we can with the yarns that we use. Or we can just develop something completely new. So this year we've been doing uh, we did some fabrics for an opera. We're doing some fabrics for a film. I've just done some upholstery on this one. There's some more blankets going on over there. One of the main benefits if you came to order a fabric for in your home is that you can you can get something completely exclusive that no one else is, it's not going to be available anywhere else, and you get exactly what you want. With weaving, the re most important thing is if it's going well, just don't stop, because you can guarantee that if you come in the next day, it just won't work. So you just want to keep going. So um, I do have a little fold-out bed, and I just sleep in here. <laughs> a lot of people will come in here and go, oh, you just love tinkering with them, you love taking them apart and doing stuff. No, I love it when they're weaving. There's nothing more satisfying than just having two or three looms on and then just running or, or putting a piece on and it, just running the whole thing off. One thing that I really didn't want to create was a sort of novelty cloth mill. Like it, we actually produce a really genuinely viable, real product. I, I've got to stop buying looms for the time being <laughs> because I've run out of space. I'm getting help.